Yo guys, Punker on another video. Now when it comes to grinding reputations, and in general the grinds that we see in the modern versions of the game, there seems to be a trend of time gating everything nowadays to extend your stay on the Battle for Azeroth conveyor belt. In vanilla, it's quite different. There's very little time gating outside of raid lockout IDs, meaning you could farm reputations or any other reward that you're looking for all day every day for pretty much 24 hours straight, if you really want to get it as fast as possible. While this breaks that forced limitation of time gating, it can also be, well, painful. No pain, no gain though, and that hardcore time sync element is what vanilla is all about. If you're one of those video game completionists whose OCD dictates that you must finish every faction grind, well, you'll have your work cut out for you. So with that being said, let's go over some of the most painful grinds in Classic WoW. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first grind that we're going to talk about is probably one of the lesser known ones on the list. I haven't seen any YouTubers talk about it really at all. It won't be available in the game until AQ40 is actually released, so phase 5. But once the AQ40 gates open, or once the AQ40 gates are available to open, there's a new faction that everyone is trying to push Exalted with for a couple different reasons. The faction is called Cenarian Circle, and the main reason people are pushing for this rep is actually to get nature resistance gear patterns, so the patterns to create the nature resist set. Although, there's also quests which involve the reputation that lead to epic item rewards, which are attainable outside of raiding, but in order to get those rewards, you need to do a pretty intense series of quests. First, you need to complete the field duty quests, which allow you to pick up dropped tactical, combat, and logistics quests off enemies. You need to farm those over and over again until you collect all of the different combat, logistic, and tactical badges that you need. So those quest items, the combat, tactical, and logistic ones, give you combat kill quest briefings that ask you to kill tons of those bugs that are all over Silithus. You know those elite bugs that are everywhere all over the underground burrow system, so the tunnel systems? Like, if you're ever wondering what the hell those elite bugs are doing in Silithus, it's pretty much for this quest line. There's so many different quests part of this, like I'm not going to go into every single one of them, but there's tons of different quests that you can do, and there's a bunch of quest chains as well. And on top of that, you need to get exalted with the Cenarian Circle, which can be achieved a couple different ways. You could do AQ20 over and over again, but you're going to be time gated because of the instance lockout, or you need to farm encrypted twilight text by the thousands so you can mass hand in those pages for the repeatable quest. Once you've got the requisite rep and you've collected enough badges, you can get a ton of really good gear. So if we look specifically here, there's Earthstrike, which is one of the best hunter trinkets specifically, and it's also really good for rogues and warriors as well. There's Wrath of Cenarius, we've got Fist of Cenarius, Might of Cenarius, Rock Fury Bracers, which are incredible. We've got Earth Calm Orb, which is also really good. Deep Rock Bracers, which is a pretty good entry level or PvP plate bracers. And in general, some really good gear that you could get without even stepping in a raid. The whole thing in general just takes so much time, so much effort. You spend a ridiculous amount of time in Silithism, and by the end of it, every crevice in your body is filled with sand from your ear canal all the way to your butt crack. Now this next one in particular is Alliance only. It's a painful grind, but the reward is quite fruitful. So rip horde, you're not invited to this party. It's the Winter Spring Frost Saber grind. This is one of the most tedious grinds in vanilla. You need to get exalted with the Winter Saber trainer's reputation in order to get access to this mount. Now I'm not exactly sure if this is still the way it is in 1.12 or the version of Classic that we're going to play, but in the original version of the game, you actually needed to learn Tiger training before you were allowed to ride that specific mount, since it's a cat. Meaning you would also need to get Darnassus exalted if you weren't a Night Elf already to ride it. I'm not exactly sure if it was like that in later versions and later patches, but from the research that I did, that was definitely a common theme that I saw throughout. So you have three quests that are repeatable which give you reputation with the Winter Saber trainers. The quests involve going around Winterspring and farming dropped quest items from various different mobs. You need to complete about 850 quests, hand-ins, over and over and over again in order to get exalted if you want this mount, or if you're a human I think it's about 750, maybe 760. It's kind of a nightmare. I mean it's probably not the worst thing ever because you're making gold while you're doing it, so you can literally just farm gold off killing beasts as you collect all the quest items and knock two burns with one stone, but damn, I mean, it's still so brutal, just the amount of times you have to do the same quest over and over again. But the feeling of satisfaction when you're done though must be immense, and the mount that you get is really uniquely beautiful. I have to admit, it's one of my favorite mounts in vanilla in general, but this farm definitely deserves to be on the list, that's for sure. Alright, now this one is another tedious rep farm, although I would say that this one's probably less painful than the Winter Saber farm in general, but still nonetheless rough, and can at some times on a high population server be relatively contested. 
it's the Timbermaw Farm Rep, which is a faction based in Fellwood and Winterspring involving the Furbolgs. The way that you get this rep is from mob farming, so the actual mobs give you rep, and you can also complete repeatable quests as you're mob grinding, which adds to the rep game, which is why it's a bit less tedious than the last one. So you'll just go to different camps, there's the Winterfall camp or the North Furball camp in Fellwood, but this isn't really a rep grind, so I'll cover it really shortly. It all starts with Grazzle and South Fellwood, so if you guys want to go check out a guide, you can see the whole structure of the quests. I'm pretty sure there's one on Classic Wowhead. This rep farm is very crucial for enchanters. It unlocks plus 15 agility to your one-handed weapon and plus 25 agility to a two-hander enchant as well, which are two of the most sought after enchants in the game for hunters and rogues. So again, it's a very hefty rep grind, which requires pretty much an insane amount of mob grinding to the point where your fingers are going to fall off and your eyes are going to rot. I'd buy a diaper if you plan on doing these. Now this one is an absolute status symbol, especially if you can get it on Alliance side. It's Baron Rivendare's Death Charger, so the mount that drops off the last boss of Strathholm on Dead side. Baron Rivendare. Now this one, to actually farm it, you're going to need a group of five or you can opt for, especially when you're better geared, to maybe like two man or three man the dungeon, depending on how well geared you are and how well geared your healer is, which will reduce the amount of people that you're going to be rolling against. Or you can sell tank runs and say that you want to have it on reserved. So say that your payment for tanking the dungeon is that you want the mount reserved for yourself. There's all kinds of different ways that you can set it up. But in general, it's kind of rough to get because there's four other people in the group that want to get it as well. The drop rate is super, super low. It's actually a 0.8% drop rate. It, it can take well over 100 runs easily. And this isn't a dungeon where you can just skip to the end. You actually have to clear every single ziggurat throughout the entire dungeon and then head towards the last boss, unlocking the door. So each run will probably take around 30 minutes on average. But as I stated, it's an absolute status symbol, especially on Alliance side because it's basically the undead mount. On Horde side, it doesn't really matter that much, but if you're Alliance who doesn't have access to a mount like that at all in vanilla and you get the mount, you stand out in Ironforge more than anybody else. For some reason in my mind, just seeing an epically geared gnome on a Death Charger, the gnome specifically, is just one of the coolest status symbols there is in vanilla World of Warcraft. But yeah, this is an extremely hard mount to get. It's very, very rare, and it's kind of tough to reliably farm unless you have a group of people who are so selfless that they'll just farm it with you, farm the dungeon with you over and over again, all pass the mount to you, which is pretty much unheard of unless you're like Asmongold and he's got all of his, you know, Asmund cucks following him around <laughs> trying to get him the mount. So yeah, good luck on this one. It's really, really tough and it's probably one of the coolest things in the game. Okay, now this next one is quite similar to the last one, which is why I'm adding it right after. It's the Thunder Fury farm. So in general, you might be thinking this isn't really a solo farm. It's not really, I guess, a farm at all, but there's something that's painful about it and you could kind of call it a farm because if your guild's not really doing Molten Core and just going back there to try and farm Thunder Furies for their main tanks or their off tanks or something, it's technically a farm, it's just a raid-wide farm. So in order to get Thunder Fury, you need to get two bindings. One drops off of Gar and one drops off of Baron Geddon. After you get the bindings, you need to smelt 10 Elementium bars and then you have to kill Thunderan, who's a boss that you summon in Northern Silithus. That's the easy part. The hard part is getting both of the bindings, and the reason why it can be extremely painful is just the RNG element. You can, there might be a guild on your server who gets a Thunder Fury after a month, but the element of having two individual bindings that are dropping off separate bosses is kind of what makes this potentially really painful. There's a chance that you're in the one binding club, and the one binding club is when you only have one of the bindings, and the second one just refuses to drop. So let's say you have the Gar binding. Every single time that you're doing Baron Geddon, you're on the tip of your toes, just like drop, 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 and it just never drops. It's one of the most painful things in the game. I never really got Thunder Fury or a binding on an actual legitimate server, but I did play on a little bit of a fun server, and I had one of the bindings, and I kept grinding for the second binding, and I did like 30 different Molten Core runs after that, and it just refused to drop. So I actually know how this feels. And I'm sure some of you guys maybe did it in a retail where you were just trying to get it on your character as a sort of nostalgia piece and it took absolutely forever to get it. So in general, this can be super painful and I hope that you're never a part of the One Binding Club because it really sucks. Next up is widely known as probably the most hardcore grinding classic. I know I said maybe for the Frost Saber, but this one definitely takes the cake. 
It's the PvP ranking grind, specifically rank 14. Now this one is ridiculously time intensive, more so than any other rep grind or item grind there is, period. So the difficulty of attaining rank 14, Grand Marshal, or High Warlord isn't consistent. It's based on the server that you're playing on. So getting rank 14 is harder on a highly competitive PvP server, let's say a highly populated one as well, than it would be on a low population RP PvE server. It's based on the honor accumulation of other PvP players on that server. There's a ranking ladder every honor reset. And based on where you are in that ladder, you get a set amount of ranking points in that interval period. So if you don't keep up on one reset period, you actually lose ranking and you'll start dropping down. You lose honor progress if you take a break, which is one of the reasons why this is so intense. You need to play a ridiculous amount, consistently pushing more and more honor without stopping for even a week. If you've heard that it takes months, like 3 months or so, of playing 12 hours a day, queuing BGs non-stop, and I don't mean just, you know, playing 12 hours, logging on, doing some quests, you know, doing a raid, farming, and also doing BGs, I mean 12 hours minimum every single day of being in a BG, the moment you log on to your character to the moment you log off and go to bed, all day for months. Yep, that is true, absolutely true. It's the most intense grind associated to Vanilla by far. So if you're looking to hit rank 14, understand that you can't have the job and the poop breaks will be pretty scarce. I'd suggest a nutrient enema. And honestly, I wouldn't suggest it at all. It's just not a healthy thing to do. And there's better ways to enjoy the game. But it is a status symbol. And if you want to do it, then all the power to you. And you know what? If you're on my server and you're pretty good at PvP, I'll probably do BGs with you and help you get it. Now closely aligned to the rank 14 farm are the PvP reputation grinds. So for each battleground, there's a faction. Warsong Gulch has Silverwing Sentinels, and Horde has Warsong Outriders. You get rep from every single flag capture in the BG, as well as handing in marks after you've won or potentially lost the BG, you can hand in 3 marks at a time. From Honored to Exalted, you get a bunch of different rewards, the best of which being, of course, the Exalted ones. There's some really nice epics here, and of course you get access to the Warsong Gulch Tabards, which are pretty cool. Arathi Basin has the League of Arathor for Alliance and the Forsaken Defilers. You gain rep from actually gaining resources in the BG itself, similar to Warsong Gulch Flag Captures, and of course handing in the Arathi Basin marks as you would expect. The rewards for the different thresholds of AB rep are really good. The later tier, there's shoulder pads with some really nice base stats, and the highlight rewards being Sage Claw, which is a nice caster one-hander, and Iron Bark Staff, which is a great caster staff. But of course, the crown jewel being the Tabard. The Tabards for AB rep are arguably the nicest Tabards in the entire game, especially the Alliance alternative. We've got the Defiler Tabard with a sweet zombie green color to it and a skull to show off your punk rock side. The Alliance one, the Arathur Tabard, which is just straight up a gold Tabard with an arch logo. This one in particular is so damn awesome. It sticks out through its inherent contrast with pretty much every kind of armor that you use with it, but even with that being said, it also blends in really well with pretty much all of the armor in the game. It goes well with everything. It's by far my favorite tabard in the game, by a long shot. Now this one honestly shouldn't even be on the list because it's not really hard to get exalted. The Alterac Valley rep is the Frostwolf Clan and Stormpike. The rewards are pretty damn amazing though. So outside of the tabard, the tabard is kind of average, I don't really like it you get some really nice epics. There's Don Julio's ring, which is one of the best melee rings in the entire game. There's the offhands, which are again some of the best in the game, especially the healer one. And on top of this, you get a mount. So on both sides, there's a mount. There's a Frostwolf mount and then the ram. But again, this one isn't really a pain to grind, so it doesn't really count. The AB and Warsong Gulch reps are very heavy, like 100 hours plus each at minimum to get exalted. Slightly faster if you're in a top pre-made who wins every single game, 5 capping ABs or 3 owing fast wars on gulch caps, but still, it's a painful grind. Don't expect to get these tabards without a serious time investment. Alright, so last on the list, we've got the BRD farm runs. So there's actually two farms that you can do on BRD. There's the arena farm and there's emp runs or emperor runs. So Emperor Runs is the last boss. His name is Emperor Tharsen. And there's actually these skips that you could do to bypass most of the bosses and just make your way to the last boss's room. So it's slightly easier in that sense, but it still requires a lot of travel, a lot of mob killing, and a couple bosses that you have to take down in, in, in the process. So Emperor Tharsen, the reason why people tend to just farm him and ping him over and over again is because he drops two items. One of them is Iron Foe and the other one is Hand of Justice. Now these are two of the best Fury Warrior items in the entire game, at least from a pre-raid perspective. So the mace, Iron 
Alpha was really good on Fury Warriors, you'd imagine, especially with world buffs, and Hand of Justice is one of the best trinkets that you could use all the way to Nax. So most people will just go for Hand of Justice, not really care, they might get lucky, they might not. Some people won't even go for Hand of Justice, but if you don't go for Hand of Justice, you're an absolute psychopath. But some people are so damn hardcore that they have to get both, you know what I mean? And there's always someone like that, and I feel bad for those people because they're gonna have to farm Emperor so many times to force both of those items to drop. And they might end up seeing like 15 Hand of Justices before they actually see the Iron Foe drop even once. So this one can be super painful. Now the arena farm is that little arena event, right, the first, basically the first boss in the dungeon, right when you walk past all of the prisons, to the left, up that little ramp, there's this arena, and it's an event boss where ads come out from one of the gates and then a boss comes from the other gate. The reason why people want to farm this arena event so much is because it drops something called Savage Gladiator's Chain, which is one of the best hunter chess pieces or fury warrior chess pieces available until I think AQ40, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's till AQ40, considering it gives the trifecta of stats and it also gives 2% chance to crit. It has a pretty high chance to drop at 11%, but the reason why that can be misleading is because the way the arena event works is you're not always going to get the same boss. So there's a bunch of different bosses in the arena event. I think there's maybe four, five, six, something like that, something around there. There's a bunch of different bosses that you can get. So you're not guaranteed to get the boss Gorosh the Dervish, who's the boss that actually drops the Savage Gladiator chain. So you can keep doing it over and over again and not see Gorosh for maybe 20 runs in a row. So that's the first element of RNG that you have to battle through. And then once Gorosh shows up, you have to hope that he's going to drop your chess piece. If not, then you're going to have to go through the process over and over again trying to force that Gorosh summon. This is actually a farm that I've done in the past. I've just done the arena over and over and over again. I got pretty lucky. I think I got it after 20 or 25 different runs on my warrior, but even, the, even those 25 runs felt super painful. And you'll notice that both of the epic items that drop in BRD are actually both pre-raid items for Fury Warriors. So Fury Warriors have the whole thing to do. They have Emp runs and they also have Arena runs. So if you're a Fury Warrior, you're going to be spending a whole lot of time in Blackrock Depths if you plan on min-maxing. I'd suggest doing Emp runs while not skipping the Arena. So doing the Arena and then making your way to Emperor to knock two birds with one stone. This is a min-maxing thing and it's something that only the most hardcore people are going to do, the most dedicated Fury Warriors but it is quite painful. All right, guys, that's it for this one. These are the most painful grinds that I can remember from the top of my head from Classic WoW from my experience in vanilla. I did a bit of research for this one, but I couldn't find anything else super relevant. Although you guys know I make mistakes all the time. I don't really do much research for my videos in general. I tend to just pull things off the top of my head, record it and just send it out. Um, so if you guys know any other good ones, please let me know in the comment sections. Please educate me, I'm a simpleton. If you guys wanna support my content so I can keep making videos like this, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, of course, you know the drill soldiers. Follow me on Twitch since I'll be streaming the release of Classic. Join the Discord for some spicy discourse like I've been saying for the last couple of days. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you liked it and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.